Hi, welcome. My name is Steve. I'm a former maths teacher and I'm about to have a go at the UK Senior Mathematical Challenge from uh, November 2017. This was the, the oldest challenge I've got that I wasn't teaching for. So all the challenges before this I was actually teaching. So I don't think I've seen this, but we're going to give it a go. Um, Amiga's already done this. Uh, he said it was fine. Uh, he or she, I will say. Um, but the way it works is that if you're doing this as a pupil, or you're doing this after the fact, or at any point, um, you're meant to have 90 minutes. If you're doing this seriously in competition, you'll get 90 minutes to do a test like this. Uh, I'm probably going to take a bit longer than 90 minutes because I'm probably going to be talking through some uh, maths as I'm going through it. Um, and every question is multiple choice. You've got four or five options in each one. And the questions are different. They're really difficult. Um, even if you're doing this as a year uh, 12 or 13 student, it's going to be difficult. It's not easy maths, and if you can get most of them right, you're doing very, very well. You should not expect to get everything right. You should not expect to finish the paper. You should expect to be missing stuff out. And I would suggest you don't guess on any of these, because you see how it scores. It says down here, everyone starts with 25 marks. You don't lose any marks for leaving it blank. You get four marks if you get it right, and you lose one mark for every question you get wrong. So this is different to the other challenges you get. The scoring system is slightly different. So more importantly, this one here punishes you for guessing. So if I get to the point where I've narrowed it down to two, it's probably worth guessing. If I can't narrow it down to two, I'm not going to give an answer. So uh, the highest score you can get, I believe, is 125. So if you get everything right, uh, if you get everything right, and uh, then you'd be at 25 marks that you start with as well, gets you 125. But we're going to give it a go. Um, what time is on now? We're just going to check the time. So we have. Yeah, which is just about 10 p.m. So I'm on a bit of the tired side, but I thought I'd give it a go because I haven't done maths in a while. Right, Amiga's uh, Amiga in chat. So I'm doing this live on Twitch as well. So Amiga in chat has said he doesn't think it's a functions question, which I don't think so easy when I was copying and pasting it all in. So we're going to give this a go. So off we go. One of the following numbers is prime. Which one is it? Well, it's not that one because that's even, and it's not that one. Um. So, uh, one of these three, one of the three we're left with will be a multiple of three. Um, so let's see if we can find that. So this is 2015, the digit sum of that is 8. 2017, the digit sum of that is 10. And 2019 is divisible by 3, so it's not that one. And 2015 ends in a 5, so it's not that one. It is 2017 is our answer. Last year, an earthworm from Wigan, named Dave, wriggled into the record books as the largest fan in the UK. Dave was 40 centimetres long and had a mass of 26 grams. Oops, sorry. Chats from the house. Go to that. Okay. What was Dave's, Dave's mass per unit length? So if you look, if you're not sure what that means, if you look at the units of the question, so for example, we're dividing the, gra the weight by the length. Grams per centimetre means... Uh, that you can see the little slash in between the means divide. So we're going to do 40 divided by 20. No, we're not. We're going to do 26 divided by 40. Now 40, um, this will terminate. So we're just going to actually physically divide it. So we're going to see how many 40s are there in 26. Um, because you divide them by 40, it will terminate. Um, it's not going to be a recurring fraction. So how many 40s in 26 is none? Carry. 26. How many 40s in 260 is 4 carry 20? Yeah, and how many 4s in 200 is... How many 40s in 200 is 5? It's not 0.45. Hmm. What am I doing wrong? How many 4s in 260 is 6 carry 20? There we go, not 0.65. It's a good thing my option wasn't there. I need to wake up a bit. I've not had a not had a very cognizant day today. The five integers 2, 5, 6, 9 and 14 are arranged into a different order. In the new arrangement, the sum of the first three integers is equal to the sum of the last three integers. What is the middle number in the new arrangement? Okay. Oh, so because you because you're gonna have five numbers, this one's gonna get counted twice. So this is gonna be in both the first three and the last three. So all you're looking for is these two need to match these two. So we're looking to pair these numbers up so that they match. 
So you can do um, you can do two and nine, and uh, six and five gets you eleven either side, which means fourteen is going to be in the middle. Hi Ignatius. Which of the following is equal to 2017? Subtract 1 over 2017. So you could, this is quite nice. I think it's the last one. Um, so you're going to write 2017 as 2017 squared over 2017 minus 1 over 2017, which is the same as 2017 squared minus 1 over 2017 and the numerator is a difference of two squares so you can say it's the same as 2017 plus 1 multiplied by 2017 minus 1 so it's going to be this one here one light year is nearly 6 times 10 to the 12 miles in 2016 the Hubble Space Telescope set a new cosmic record observing a galaxy 13.4 thousand million light years away. Roughly how many miles is that? So we have 13.4 thousand million light years away. So that is, oh dear, thousand million, oh dear. So 13.4 thousand, so there's, there's the thousand, there's the million, times 6, times 10 to the 12. So I'm just going to rewrite this uh, in, but in standard form, it's 1.34 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, times 6 to the 10 to the 12, which is the same as 6 times 1.34 is about, it's about 8, times 10 to the 22. So 6 thirteens is 78, so 6 1.34s is 7.8-ish, uh, so it's going to be C. Weird. I'm doing it. So I'm doing it to uh, upload it into YouTube. So you can help me out. You can put stuff in chat. If you're putting answers in chat, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna look at chat as often, basically, because I, I want to try and do it myself. And I'm also trying to do it in a way that I'm explaining it to other people too. But there you go. You could. There was a bit of an easy way to do that. You could multiply six by thirteen point four, and then you can times it by a thousand, and then times it by a million, i.e. Add 3 to the base 10 and then add 6 to the base of 10. So, the circles in the diagram are to be considered so that any two circles connected by a line segment have different colours. What's the smallest number of colours required? Um, I'm going to guess 3. Can you possibly do it in 2? Well, the reason you can't do it in 2, so basically, if that one there is blue, it nullifies 4 others as blue. And the issue is, these two can't then be the same colour. Okay. However, if you do blue, blue, and blue, you can definitely do those blue. You then do that one of these two red. You can't do the other one red or blue because it will then violate it. You can do this one red, and then the remaining two can be white. So you can definitely do it in three. And I'm pretty sure the centre one, it's these three here because they're all connected to each other. You have three different colours. If this line wasn't here, you could do it in two colours. I think. Uh, the positive integer k satisfy the equation root 2 plus root 8 plus root 18 is root k. What is the value of k? Root 2 plus root 8 is 2 root 2. Uh, root 18 is 3 root 2 is root k. This is going to be the same as 6 root 2 is root k. And then if we unrationalize this, 6 is 36. 
236 is a 78, so it's going to be root 78 is root k, k is 78, not 78, 72. I'm not with it today, 236 is a 72, there we go. Tell you what, it's a good thing they've got options because I've messed up twice already. When evaluated, which of the following is not an integer? Well, that is, I think it's B, that's 1, that's 4, and that is... So this, 4 to the negative half is 1 over 4 to the half, 4 to the half is 2, so 1 over 2, so that's definitely not an integer. The diagram shows an n by n plus 1 rectangle tiled with k by k plus 1 rectangles. Where n and k integers and k takes each value from 1 to 8, what is the value of n? Okay, so this is a 1 by 2. So this very small one here is a 1 by 2. Do I need to make this bigger? Let's try and make this bigger so that you can see what I'm writing on. So let's go. Whoop. So this centre one's 1 by 2. This one here is 1 by 2. It means that one's 2 by 3 because it has to share the 2. This one must be 3 by 4, which means, which what we're trying to do is get the length of the edge. So this is 3 by 4, so that's 3. That little length is 4. This must be the 4 by 5. And if this is 5 and 3 and this is 2 high, this must be 6 high, so that's 5 wide. And if this is 6 high, then that must be 7 wide. And this is 6 high. So 7, 5 and 4 is 16, so this must be 9 and 7 along the bottom. And if it's 9, 5 and 3 and 6 is 5, 3. Must be 9, it can't be 8, it could be 8 and 8 actually, couldn't it? Yeah, in fact, this is, yeah, this is 9, this is 8. And then you need that to be 7 and that to be 8 for it to line up. So it is n by n by 1. So you've got 15 by 16 uh, outside rectangle, 15 by 16, which means n will be 15. There we go. A rectangle is divided into three smaller congruent rectangles as shown. Each of the smaller rectangles is similar to the large rectangle. Each of the four rectangles, in each of the four rectangles, what is the ratio of the length of the long side to the length of the shorter side? So what they mean by similar is that there are, there are um, a scale factor up. So if the large rectangle has a, hmm. <laughs> So we know that for them to be similar, has it got to be three times as long as it is wide or not? So for the smaller rectangles, if this is x and this is y, for the smaller one, Oh dear. I can't get my head around how to do this one. Um, we know that three of the widths make the length of the original one. Oh, um. I think it's root 3, I think it's D. Uh, the reason is that um, three of the small ones have the same area as the large one. 
which means that the area scale factor is 3, which means the length scale factor is root 3. So I believe it's root 3 to 1. Yeah, I think that's how it works. So basically the area scale factor is 3, which means the length scale factor is the square root of the area once it's root 3. So the lengths have been root 3 times as um, large as root 3. So I'm going to do it. I didn't want to start making lots of x's and y's because then you're getting two variables that you don't even need in the question to get there. So that's what I'm going to do. The teenagers Sam and Joe noticed the following facts about their ages. The difference between the squares of their ages is four times the sum of their ages. And the sum of their ages is eight times the difference between their ages. What is the age of the older of the two? All right, so we'll call them S and J. So S squared minus J squared is four lots of S plus J. That's one fact. And the sum of their ages is eight times the difference between the ages. So the second fact is S plus J is eight lots of S minus J. So, I'm not sure if this will help. We're going to rearrange the second equation. So we're going to rearrange this equation to say S or J equals. So we'll make it say S equals. So we know that uh, 7S equals um, 9J. And all I'm going to do is substitute in so 9 sevenths of j is s. So I'm going to substitute that in. This doesn't look nice, but we will give it a go. We will substitute in. Because s is the older one, we probably want to do it the other way around, actually, don't we? We probably want to do it the other way around. We want to substitute. Yeah, we're going to do it the other way around. We're going to say that j is 7 ninths of s. And then we're going to substitute j into the right-hand side equation. Uh, so we've got s squared minus 7 ninths of s squared. I don't think this is the easiest way to do it, to be honest. It's the same as 4 lots of s plus 7 ninths of s. So 16 ninths of s. Well, the good news is that these are both square numbers. That's quite nice. Or well, 7 ninths of s is not. So this is going to be 7. This is going to be, if you square 7 and square 9, you get 49 over 81. You're going to get 7. All right, there's definitely a quicker way of doing this. But I'm going to go down. This should get me an answer. It's definitely a quick way of doing this. So s squared minus 49 80 ths of s squared is 4 lots of this, which is going to be 4 sixteenths is 64 ninths of s. I like the fact that they're both square numbers. Now, apart from this s at the end, everything can be square rooted, can't it? Um, well, we're just going to say, we're going to say, what's this? Uh, this is going to be s squared minus 49 of s squared is going to be 32 80 ones of s squared is 64 ninths of s. Oh dear, I'm running out of space here, so we will carry on over here. It's a good thing I've got different colours of pen. So we can say that 32 over 81. S minus 64 ninths is 0. I'm, I'm skipping out steps because I'm running out of space, I'm afraid. So we know that either S is 0, now the age can't be 0, or this bracket is 0. So we can say that 32 80 ones of S 
equals 64 ninths. So if you multiply by 81 and divide by 32, well, things cancel out quite nicely, don't they? So again, I'm just running out of space. I'm going to go up here. So we can say that S is 64 times 89, 81, over 32 times 9. So S is, I think I've gone wrong here, 9's cancel, so you've got 9 on the top. 32's cancel with 64, so you've got 2 on the top. So S is 18. Now I'm absolutely positive there will be an easy way to do that. Hi Brainless. Uh, I don't like my method there. For question 11, there must be a quicker way, but I did not see it. So it worked. And it was nice that we were getting all these... What, what, actually, I thought we were going to get some square numbers. We didn't need them to be square. We just needed them to cancel out quite nicely. So. Right. Uh, the diagram shows a square and a regular decagon that share an edge, one side of the square. Uh, thanks, Brainless. I appreciate the uh, feedback. One side of the square is extended to meet an extended side of the decagon. What is the value of x? Okay, so. <laughs> So there might, this might not be the most elegant way of doing it, but this shape that X is in is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is a pentagon. And angles in a pentagon add up to uh, 450 degrees. So a pentagon is 450 degrees. We can work out that angle and this angle and this angle, and then this one, and take it off 450. Again, there's probably a quick way of doing it. So we know that x is going to be 450, subtract the other four angles in the pentagon, which is going to be a 90, a 270, Uh, this bottom one here is 45, it's, it's an, oh no, it's a decagon, a decagon is 36, the exterior angle of a decagon, and then this one here is 90 plus 36, this last one here is going to be another exterior angle of a decagon, plus a, 90, plus a right angle, so 90 plus 36 is 126, so x is 450, Minus all of this added together, 360. Is it 450 or is it 540? It's not 450, it's 540. Yuck. Yeah, oh dear, I tell you what, today I'm so sorry, everyone. 540. All right. Uh, if you do that again, Brainless, I will ban you, so please don't. It's 21. Uh, 90 plus 270 is 360, 460, 480, 486, 516, 522, it's 18. Right, off we go. Isabel says, Josh is innocent. Jenaton, Tegan is guilty. Josh, Jenaton is guilty, and Tegan, Isabel, is innocent. Only the guilty person is lying, and all the others are telling the truth. Who is guilty? So, what we're going to do is, the way to do this sort of problem is you're going to eat, take it in turns and assume that what they, that you're going to assume that they're, it, it depends how many people are guilty of telling the truth. In this particular case, you, the only, there's only one person lying. So for each case, I'm going to assume Isabel's lying, and then I'm going to follow it through. And if no one else is lying, given that Isabel is, then it will be Isabel and so on. So, uh, Isabel, Josh is innocent. Well, if she's guilty, that's a lie, and Josh is guilty. Uh, 
Um, but that can't be true because if she is lying, that means Josh is guilty. But that means Josh is guilty, so she can't be guilty. So Isabel is good. It's not Isabel. Uh, Jonathan says Tegan is guilty. Well, Tegan, we know Isabel is innocent, so this must be true. Jonathan says Tegan is guilty. Josh says Jonathan is guilty. Ah, but Tegan, we know, ah, so it's got to be Jonathan, because we know Tegan is good. So this is definitely a lie. So then Jonathan must be the liar. Got to love geometry indeed. In the diagram, all the angles are marked a dot are equal in size. What is the angle marked X? Hmm. <laughs> hmm. It's going to make it a bit bigger. So the issue is you haven't got any of these three. There's three angles there that you don't know anything about. I think, weirdly, that you don't need those. Oh, I think, I think what's happened is you've affected, let's say you start here, you go around, round, You've gone round twice. And every time you've gone round, so in total, you've, the exterior angles would add up to 720. Right. Bye. Uh, so that's true. Stop. Stop what? That's true. However, I think that's not actually going to help me because that's not going to help me because if if I assume the dots are quite large turns, then X will be quite small. So I don't think that will fix X to a specific type. So I'm not sure that's going to help me. You see a bunch of scaling triangles. Hmm. Can't see any triangles. Am I being blind? Yeah, the problem is the dots more than ninety, so you can't have t you can't have two dots in a triangle; they'll never close. I'm going to come back to this one. I think uh, they were. We just get spammers on the on Twitch. I'm afraid. I'm going to come back to that one. So, I have question fourteen, I've skipped. I'm going to come back to it. I, I think it's doable. I quite like my geometry. I just can't see what to do. All right, the diagram shows a square PQRS points T U V and W light on the edges of the square as shown such that PT is 1, QU is 2, so PT is 1, QU is 2, RV is 3, and SW is 
four. What is the length of PQ? I mean, it looks like it's going to be five, but I'm not going to I'm not going to go down that route. It just looks like it's five, maybe six. I nudge the square such that you haven't got any angles, you haven't got any lengths other than what you've shown. Hmm, not doing well today, am I? I'm going to come back to this one as well. All right, I need to go on to my other slide. 16. The diagram shows two angle triangles inside a, a square. Perpendicular edges of the larger triangle have length of 15 and 20. What is the area of the shaded quadrilateral? So this is 5. So the last one's a turn, that's 20. And this is perpendicular, well, that's 20. My guess is you're either going to work out this length here or this length here, and then you can work out the two white triangles and take it off 400. Yeah, I'll, I'll have, a, have a look at that, Amiga, when I come back. Um, and like I say, I'm a bit tired. I don't think I'm having a good day today. If I can work out one of these two lengths, I can probably work out the area of the top white triangle. I can definitely work out the area of this triangle. It's going to be half of 20, 15, so that's going to be 150 um, units squared. It's an area. And then the area of the whole thing is 400. Uh, Yeah, the larger right one we know. We it's it's. I, and this point doesn't meet at the centre of the square. That's a good. Can't do that. You'd think the smaller white one's simple. I need another length, don't I? Yeah, the hypotenuse, the, the, the hypotenuse of the larger triangle is 25. So the hypotenuse of the large one, if we worked it out, would be 15 squared plus 20 squared square rooted to be 25. So 25 is that length there. Yeah. Because it's just a, a Pythag Pythagorean triple, but I'm not sure that helps us because I don't know how far along this red light, this, this red one that the, the, the center is. Oh, the smaller white one is similar to the larger one. It is, yeah, okay, thank you. So, if the area of this triangle is 150, we can work out the area of the smaller one because it has, it's similar because, why is it similar? Yeah, because this angle will be the same as that angle, and then this angle will be the same as that one. Yeah, well spotted. So we know that the scale factor is uh, four fifths, 
and the area scale factor will be 4 fifths squared. So we're going to times the area of the large one by the scale factor squared. Gets us the new ones. It's going to be 16 over 25 times 150. Uh, 25 into 150 goes 6 times. 6 sixteens is 96. So 96. So the area of this one is 96. The area of the whole shape is 400. So it's going to be 400 subtract 96 subtract 150. It's going to be 250. 150, 154. No, 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 you're right. Similar is the correct term. Similar is correct. No, no, no. I, please, no, I know. Please, please tell me sometimes. Especially when you can say I'm stuck. I'm happy for you to help me when I'm stuck. If you do it before I've had a chance to have a go at it, I'm just going to... You can do that, but I just won't look at chat until I'm stuck, I think. That's fine. Interesting geometry, says Ignatius. So Amy, Beth and Claire each have some sweets. Amy gives one-third of her sweets to Beth. Beth gives one-third of all the sweets she has now got to Claire. Then Claire gives one-third of all the sweets she now has to Amy. And all the girls end up having the same number of sweets. I'm sure I've done this before. Sure I've done this one before. Claire begins with 40 sweets. How many sweets does Beth have originally? So, So, yeah, I just don't, I'm not going to like it. So if you go, so Amy has what she started with, two thirds of what she started with, plus a third of. Uh, 40 plus, it's just going to be awful, a third of 40 plus a third of what Beth had, but Beth had a third of what Beth had plus a third of A. So that's what, that's what Amy has at the end. She has two thirds of what she started with plus a third of what Claire had. And Claire had 40 plus a third of Beth plus a third of A's. And that's the same as two thirds of what Claire has at the end. So two thirds of 40 plus this plus a third of B plus a third of of A yeah so I don't like this at all because that's not even going to get me something I can solve you have an invariant what's the invariant Oh, hang on. That should be it. That should be a negative, shouldn't it? Oh, no, that's right. Plus, yeah. Oh, so this is um actually this is a bit easier. Um, they're identical. That that. And that are identical. The only thing that's different is the third and two thirds. So you know that.
after Amy had passed her sweets, she has she has to have a th yeah. So when Amy passed her sweets, this a yeah. So Amy at the end of passing has the same as Claire has at the end of has a third of what Claire has at the end of passing. I would start from Claire. All right. I don't like what I was doing there, but I, I worked out from that that uh, this rubber is not very good. Having a good day today. Maybe I don't even upload this one. So, no, she begins at 40. Claire gives up one third of her pile and Amy has one third of the total. So if if so before the last pass, so when when Claire's got some from Beth and Beth had got some from Amy, before the last pass, Claire is passing a third of what she has to Amy, and then they have the same amount. So that point, at that point, at that point, it's it's that before the last pass, Amy has a third of what Claire has now. So that when when Claire passes them they've got the same they've got the same two thirds. So Amy has a third of what Claire has now, but I, I, I'm struggling how to integrate this forty from the beginning. So Amy's got thirty, Beth's got fifty, Claire's got forty, that would work. Yeah, I'm gonna concede that I didn't solve that. And yeah, so 30, 50, and 40 works. So the way it works is that you'll have 20 and you'll pass 10. So after the first pass, you've got that. After the next pass, you pass a third of 60. So you've got 40 and they've got 60. And then you pass a third of 60. So it's 20, sorry, 40, 40, 40. So yeah, so that is Beth has originally 50. Yeah, if I was doing this in a test, what I would try and do is I would I would just look at the five options and try each of them out to see if I could work it. Oh dear, I'm not doing good today. So the arithmetic mean, so well done Lapras. The arithmetic, the, the arithmetic mean A of any two positive numbers, X and Y is defined as A equals half of their sum. And their geometric mean is defined uh, as the square root of their product. For two particular values, x and y, with x larger than y, the ratio a to g is 5 to 4. For these values of x and y, what is the ratio of x to y? So we know that a to g is 5 to 4. So we know that 4 fifths of a half of x plus y equals the square root of x, y. So four fifths of a half is uh, two fifths, two fifths of x plus y 
is root xy. I think I'm just not awake enough to do this today. So, I mean, two fifths of x equals root x root y minus two fifths of y. So two fifths of x is root y root x minus two fifths of Root y doesn't it, doesn't it help you? You've got still got an x over here. Ah, oh, thank you, thank you. Laplace, you're good at this, aren't you? So we're going to go back to Yeah, that looks like a better way of doing it. I didn't like what I was doing. So you've got two lots of x plus y equals 5 of root x, y. And then we're going to square both sides. Uh, so we're going to have um, four lots of x squared. Well, I'm going to write x plus y squared is 25 x, y. So is it just going to be C? Right, go on, I'm stuck again. So, and square both sides. Yeah, then you rearrange and factor. Okay, so. Oh, because you're going to get a factor of x and y out of that. Okay, there we go. So you've got four lots of x squared plus four lots of y squared plus eight lots of xy equals 25 x y and then so you've got take 25 away so you've got 4 x uh, plus 4 y squared equals 17 x y What is the ratio of x to y? Oh, you can factorise that, can you? Oh, yes, of course you can. So I'm going to. So we've got four x squared. Yeah, I think it's going to be five over two because from all the fives and twos we had earlier. But four x squared take seventeen x y. Plus four y squared is zero. 
It's not 5 over 2. Alright, I'm going to pass. I'm going to say I can't do this one. So you can factor. It's not. 4 to 1. Um, so you've got 2x No, it's 4x and x. And 4y and y. There we go. There we go, equals 0. So uh, 4x to y must be 4 to 1. There we go. Yeah. Lapras, you are pretty good at this, so thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, I just got that. <laughs> oh dear. All right, the diagram shows a circle of radius 1 touching three sides of a 2 by 4 rectangle. A diagonal of the rectangle intersects a circle of points P and Q is shown. What is the length of the chord PQ? So the rectangles are 2 by 4, so we have 2 by 4, um, which means that this angle is. No, it doesn't. Ignore that. I thought it was going to be 60 degrees. It isn't necessarily, is it? Um, what is the length of the chord PQ? So the radius is 2. Apologies, the diameter is 2. The radius is 1. So we're looking for the length of the chord PQ. Oh dear. Well, this this must be two as well. This length there, and that length must be one. Because it must hit halfway up, mustn't it? So we could work out the length of, let's call that uh, uh, A. We could look at the length of AO and find the length of AP if we can find out what P is. Um, I mean, I could solve this a dirty way. I could, I could pretend this is coordinate geometry, and this is this circle is the circle. This is this is not very nice, but you could basically say the circle is the circle uh, x minus two. Apologies, x minus one squared plus y minus one squared equals um, one. And then you could find out where that hits the line y equals a half x. If you substitute, if you substitute y equals a half x into this, you'll get p and q. You'll get the two points p and q, and then you could just work out the distance between them. So I could do that. That will work. So y equals a half x. So you've got x squared minus two x plus one, and then y equals a half x. So you've got plus. A uh, quarter x squared minus 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 x uh, plus one equals one. So you've got five quarters of x squared minus three x plus one plus one minus one. So it's plus one is zero. Um, if you multiply through by four, you get five x squared. Minus 12x plus 4 is 0. Well, we know this is going to factorise. 
it's going to factorize into a, fa a fraction and a normal. We know one of the solutions is going to be um, x equals 2. So we've got probably something, yeah, it's going to be 5x and x minus 2 minus 2. So you've got, so you've got x equals 2 when y equals 1. So that's the coordinate q. And then you've got the coordinate p, you've got x equals 2 fifths, y equals, or y is a half x, or y is 1 fifth. So there's the points, and then you could just work out the distance between those points. Um, yeah, x is equal to 2 fifths. So the distance between those points is going to be, um, so the distance, so pq, the distance between pq is going to be the square root of the differences squared. So the square root of 2 minus 2 fifths squared plus 1 minus 1 fifth squared. So PQ, this is not, again, there's probably a more elegant way of doing this. PQ is going to be 2 minus 2 fifths is 8 fifths squared 64, uh, 64 fifths plus 1 minus 1 fifth is 4 fifths squared is 16 fifths, no, 16 20 fifths, 25, square rooted, which is going to be 16 plus six, 64 plus 16 is uh, 74, 80, 80, 80 over 25 square rooted, which is going to be uh, something over 5. So square root of 80 is square root of 80 is 4 root 5. Which is this one. They they haven't rationalized it and ours is rationalized. 4 root 5 over 5 is the same as saying you could divide top and bottom by root 5, and you'll get this. So, that was a bit nicer. I'm glad I managed to <laughs> get back on track. I didn't like my method, but it worked. The diagram shows a square P R P Q R S with edge of length 1 and 4 arcs, each of which is a quarter of a circle. doesn't look like a quarter of a circle, does it? Those arcs don't look very quarter circle-ish. They're basically saying this is a quarter of a circle, and then this is a quarter of a circle, and then this, and then this, and it doesn't look that way, does it? Can I undo? Anyway. Shows a square with edges of length 1, so this is 1. This is 1. Arc TRU, TRU has centre P, and VPW has centre R, arc UV has centre Q, and arc WT has centre S. What is the length of the perimeter of the shaded region? Okay. We don't know how long this bit is, do we? Therein lies the issue. How do we work out how long this is? Oh, we know. Oh, hang on, hang on. If we work out this length here, which will be root 2, we know that that length there is the diagonal of the square is root 2, but it's also the length of PT and PU, because it's uh, it's the radius of the arc as well. So we know that PU is root 2, which means US is going to be 1, uh, it's root 2, take 1. So that's going to be how long that uh, the radius of the short circles is. So the radius of the larger quarter circles will be root 2, and the radius of the shorter quarter circles will be root 2 minus 1. So the perimeter will be 
two quarter circles with a small radius and two quarter circles with a large radius. So the small, small one is going to be a quarter, but we've got two of them, so effectively a half of the circle. So we've got two of them. So the, the two small ones is going to be a half of um, the perimeter is pi times diameter. So it's going to be half times pi times the diameter, which is going to be two lots of the radius. And then the half is going to cancel out. And then the large one is going to be very similar. The large one is going to be a half times pi times two lots of the radius. Now in either both of these, the half and the two are going to cancel out, so you could, they're all going to cancel out. So the perimeter, the total perimeter is, um, back to red pen, why not? So the perimeter is, it's going to be root 2 pi plus root 2 minus 1 pi. And we can factorize a pi in here, so we can say it's pi lots root 2 plus root 2 minus 1 or pi lots of 2 root 2 minus 1 which is this one here. That was nice. How many pairs x, y positive integers satisfy the equation 4 to the power x equals y squared plus 15? Oh dear. And the integers So what about doing 4 to the power x subtract y squared is 15. And is that a difference of two squares? I think it is, isn't it? Because 4 to the power x will, is it a square number? You can write it as 2 to the power 2x, I believe. And that is a square number because that is 2 to the power x squared. Yeah, okay. So then we can do a difference of two squares with this. So let's go up here. So we can say that's 2 to the x minus y and 2 to the x plus y is 15. And because they equal 15, we know that 2 to the power x minus y minus y has to equal 3 or 5 and then 2 to the power x plus y has to equal 5 or no 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 hmm. could be 1 or 15 as well couldn't it well hang on hang on because they're integers 2 to the power x will be well it's always positive isn't it so in fact yeah, but you can't be the way around. 2 to the power x minus has to be 1, and 2 to the power x plus y has to be 15, or 2 to the power x minus y has to be 3, when 2 to the power x plus y is 5. Because 2 to the power x will always be positive, The second, the second one's always going to be larger, so this side's always going to be larger than the first side. Unless y is negative. Oh dear. How many pairs of... Oh no, positive integers, yeah. So x and y are positive, so this one's always going to be larger, so you don't need to do the combinations of the way around. So my guess is it's going to be 2. Do I have to actually work out what they are? Do I have to actually work out what they are? 
or can I just assume that there's two? If all to the power x is 1 or even, and y squared plus 15 is odd greater than 1. Why is y squared plus 15 always odd? It isn't, is it? If y was an odd number, then it would be even. I think there's two. Do I have to work out what they are? Can I work out what they are? 2 to the power x plus y is 15. So can I work out what they are by just kind of losing, using a bit of logic? So because they're positive, so on this second one, 2 to the power x plus y is 5. So x could be 2 and y is 1. If x is 2 and y is 1, yeah, that works. So x could equal 2 and y could equal 1 for this bottom pair. So that definitely works. x is 2 and y is 1 definitely works. And... 2 to the power of x plus y is 5, x could be 1 and y could be 3. If x is 1, this second doesn't work. So so, so that's one solution. There's definitely one. There's definitely one pair. We've got x is 2, y is 1. 2 to the power of x plus y is 15. So 2 to the power of x, what, about, what if 2 to the power of x was 8? So x is 3. And y would be 7. Does that work? So if x is 3... Yeah, so I think x, x equals 3, y equals 7 works with this top one. So I've found two, and I'm pretty sure these will only have one solution each, because they're not quadratics. So, and then, because x and y have to be positive, so I'm actually going to say there's two solutions. One of them when x is 2, y is 1, and one of them when x is 3, y is 7. Ugh. <laughs> um, y squared can be even or odd, so... If y was odd, um, y squared plus 15 will be even. So you're looking for, you're probably right, you've actually worked out that y has to be odd in both cases. Apart from when 4 to the power x, uh, well 4 to the power x can't be, can't be 1 because x can't be 0. So you've actually worked out from, your, from what you've said that y is always going to be odd and you are correct because y is odd in both cases, so well done. The diagram shows a regular octagon and a square formed by drawing four diagonals of the octagon. The edges of the square have length 1, so that's 1. That's 1. What is the area of the octagon? Well, the area of the square is 1. Can we work out the area of these little triangles? I'm not sure. I'm not sure we can because I don't think... Can you work out the height of the triangles? The base is one. Can you work out the height? Can you work out this distance here? Actually, there's something else we can do, and I've seen this done. Actually, I should have spotted this quicker. Um, when you've got uh, a shape like this and you're trying to work it out, one of the things you can do, especially with a shape that splits nicely angle-wise, and the reason this splits nice angle-wise is because it's an octagon. It's got eight. Is if you split the octagon into eight of them, you know that's 45 degrees and 45 degrees will have an exact trig value. So the this side, this length here, is going to be half of the diameter of the square. The diameter of the square is root 2, so that's going to be root 2 over 2. Root 2 over 2. So we can say that the area of one triangle is going to be half AB sine C. So half of AB is root 2 over 2 times root 2 over 2, times sine 45, and we know sine 45 is root 2 over 2. So this is going to be a half times root 2 over 2, times root 2 over 2, times root 2 over 2. So it's going to be root 2 cubed over 2 to the power 4, which is root 2 cubed is going to be 2 root 2, over 2 to the power 4 is 16. This is going to be uh, root 2 over 8. And we've got 8 of them, because that's one of them, and it's an octagon, it makes 8 of them. 8 root 2s over 8 is root 2.
Hi, Sam. Right, we're getting to the hard ones now. Remember, if we guess any of these, how long have we got? I think I've actually, even though I've missed that, so I've, I've taken just over an hour to get to this point. So I've got another 40, I've not got another 25 minutes left if I want it. The parabola with equation y equals x squared is reflected in the line with the equation y equals x plus 2, which of the following is the equation of the reflected parabola. So, I believe when you reflect one graph in a straight line, you, are, you, you can replace y with x plus 2, and you can replace x plus 2 with y. So all we're going to do is take this, and we're going to rearrange by saying y equals x plus 2, and x is... Uh, and Yeah, we're just going to swap them over. So we're going to say y is x plus 2 equals x is y. Is that one of the ones we've got? Or do we have to replace do we have to replace x with y minus 2? Yeah, you're right, Sam. Thank you. So, x is y minus two all squared. Yeah, x is y minus two. So, and then if we expand this out, we're going to get x plus two equals y squared minus four plus. Uh, so minus four y plus four. And that's going to be. They're all x equals, aren't they? So we're going to say x equals y squared minus four y minus two. Uh, plus two. Thank you. Let's see. Uh, the other thing we could do, C looks very right there. You're absolutely right, Sam. Uh, the other thing we could have done, we could have sketched it. But I, um, you need to know when you sketch it. You need to know what all of these look like, and they're all very similarly. So I don't think that helps you very much. You might be able to eliminate some. There is a set of straight lines in a plane such that each line intersects exactly ten others. Which of the following could not be the number of lines in that set? Now, I think I've seen this question before. So what it means is if there were... There is a set of straight lines in a plane such that each line intersects exactly 10 others. How many different numbers of lines could you have? Now, if you had 11, 11 would work. You could have one line, two lines, three lines, four lines, and so on, 11 times. And as long as none of them were parallel to each other, every line would hit the other 10. And I think, I, how do I remember how to do this? I don't actually know which the answer is. But you can definitely have 11. You can have 11. So 11 is possible because you can have 11 lines that are not parallel to each other. You can have... So you can have 12, I think, as well. You can have 1. Yeah, you can do... You can kind of pair them off in parallel pairs. And every line will hit every other line apart from its parallel neighbour. So to get 10 intersections, you need 6 pairs of 2. And every line will hit every other line. Yeah. So you can do 12. If you do six pairs of two, every pair of lines would hit all the other pairs, but not their own. So you can definitely do 12. And I think it's the factors of 10, that's it. So the factors of 10 are 1, which gets you 11. So if you do parallel lines by themselves, 2 gets you 12. The next factor of 10 is 5. If you did 5... If you did them in, yeah, 15 would work. If you did them in 5, and then you had 5 going that way, and then you had 5 going a different direction, then every group of 5 would hit the other two groups of 5, but not their own, and that would be 15. So 5 gets you 15. It's probably going to be 16. So that can be done. 20 is 10. 
So if you had 10 lines going like that and then 10 lines intersecting them, every line would hit 10 other lines, but no, it wouldn't hit any of its partners, and you can do that if you could have 20. So 10 gets you 20. So in fact, not only is 16 the answer, it's the only answer. Uh, these four are the only answers that exist. There aren't any others. So I think it's D. Right. The diagram shows a regular nonagon, N, moving clockwise around N at each vertex as a line segment is drawn perpendicular to its preceding edge. This produces a smaller nonagon, S, shown shaded. What fraction of the area of N is the area of S? Twelve is tough, the others are obvious, yeah. I remember, and the reason I remember doing it is that I, I solved it for any number. So any number there, it's all to do with the factors. So if you picked if you picked exactly twelve intersections, it will all be to do with the factors of twelve and there would be more ways of doing it. Um, and I remember because I've seen that question before, so I've actually solved that before. So that feels a bit of a cheaty one. I can't remember where I saw it, but I've definitely seen that before. So and I think it was 10 as well. So it must have, I must have seen, someone must have posted this exact question, maybe one of my Facebook friends. The diagram shows, okay, I've read that already. The fra what fraction of the area of N is the area of S. Oh, God. So this is fixed. S can't be any smaller. Ah, S can't be any smaller because it's perpendicular. Obviously, you could change and reduce the size of S by changing the angle here. The angle, this angle here, if you made it bigger or smaller, if you made the angle larger, you'd increase the size of S. So S is fixed. What fraction of the area is N is the area of S? Oh, dear. What is it? A nonagon. Well, a nonagon is nine sides. So what we can't do is our little trick from earlier. We can't do. We can't do our trick from the octagon question because the angle at S is forty, and forty doesn't have a nice exact trig value. But you're getting some trig in here. So I'm. Oh well. No, no, no. You are getting some trig in here because. Yeah. So so maybe we do that. So maybe we work out. If we work out the area of S, the area of S will be, do we need a side length for S? Do we need to say that there's a side length for S? How long have I got? Right, I'm going to go back and do the ones I couldn't do, because this I think this is going to take me too long. So I'm going to go back to the ones I couldn't do. So I skipped out two, did I? I skipped out, I got that one, got that one. I think I skipped out 14 and 15. So 14, right, I, I will take help from chat on 14 and 15. So 15 I think is the one that um, no one solved, but someone suggested to just say, to say that the length we're trying to find is P t, PQ, so you can call it X. So we're trying to find what the length of the larger square is X. And I don't see the numbers that are in blue are given from the question. So, for example, V to R is 3. So, V to R is 3. U to Q is 2. I don't see... Right, so, so, I don't know, I think it's five, it's got to be five or six, because these other numbers just look wrong, but, hmm, 
Anyone got any ideas? Right, I'm missing something, I can't see it. Anyone got any ideas? The area of the triangles is X, the sum of the areas. The similar areas is and then the triangles like the triangles like the triangles aren't going to be half the whole shape though are they? Are the triangles definitely half the over the square? I don't think they are. Are they? I don't think they are. Because there's nothing fixing that quadrilateral in the middle, right? If that quadrilateral in the middle was something like and thinner, like these these four would not be half of the, the area of the rectangle. I fear I've overlooked the overlap. Okay, have I? So you could do that. You could do that do that they're not they're not I don't think they're the same I don't think I don't think they're half of the area of the so that's the same as that that's the same as that that's the same as that but these two aren't the same oh you're talking time so yeah I, th I think these two aren't the same I don't think that's the case also even if it was I'm not sure how it helps me um yeah no I don't think they're the same um, so what can I do here? I'm stuck, 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 stuck. Hmm. Um. Uh, like, yeah, it's, but yeah, I don't think they are because I think when you're in theory, this 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 bit in the middle should be the same as the four triangles. Well, that matches these two. That matches these two. That matches these two, and then the, this last one doesn't work. So I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure they could be. But I, don't, I just don't think they are. I think the triangles are slightly more than half the square. But I, I still don't think that helps you. Bonus question. Now that you say it. Hmm. So I'm just going to... I'm sorry. Apologies, people watching. I'm going to pass that one. Unless someone can solve it. Isn't the area in the square but not the triangles the area of TUVW? TVW. So this one here. Yeah, but they don't give you that, do they? Oh, sorry, I've not met I've misread the question. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. The area of TUVW is half that of PQRS. Absolutely right. Apologies. You're so correct. I didn't read the question. No wonder I couldn't do it. Yeah, you are right. You are right. So the area of the Oh, then it's quite easy. Then it's quite easy. So you know that this is x minus 3, this is x minus 4, this is x minus 1, this is x minus 2. So we know that x minus 2 times 3 over 2 plus 
x minus this is this is again x minus three times four over two plus x minus one times two over two plus x minus one over uh, times x minus four times one over two equals half the area of the square. So it's x squared over two. Yeah, so you're absolutely right. I just did not see that question. Someone, uh, I did not see that. So it's gonna be three x minus six plus four x minus 12 plus two x minus two plus uh, x minus four equals x squared and you're going to have a 0 equals x squared subtract 10x plus 6, 18, 19, 20, 24 you're going to have 0 equals x x and then 24 it's going to be 6 and 4 x minus 6, x minus 4, x is 6, x is 4, x can't be 4 because that four would make the, that, that side impossible. So x is six. <laughs> cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Two five head for me. Have fun, y'all. Yeah, I just misread that. I didn't read the question. Right, I've got two more to do. I've got this one and that one that looks really difficult at the end. This one I was stuck on first time round. We didn't solve it. Anyone got any ideas? Thanks, Gizzy. Very clear there. Oh, apologies. Again, I misread this one. We did it last time. We said that they've gone in two loops. We said they've gone in two loops. So if you start, if you start here, you've gone one, two. You've gone around 720 degrees. So we know that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We know that nine X has to equal 720. That doesn't work, does it? Because then I get x is 80. All right, that doesn't work. Oh, hang on, hang on. Because you've gone around twice, the exterior angles have to equal 720. The exterior angles are going to be 180 minus x. So nine lots of the exterior angles must equal 720 because you've gone around twice in two circles. So, 980s are 90, 160, 1620, minus 9x is 720, so 9x is uh, 900, so x is 100. I misread that as well. <laughs> oh dear. Right, we have, let's see how much time we've got. We've got seven minutes left. I do not think... We are going to be able to solve this in seven minutes. I can't, can't see what to do. Can't see what to do. Can't see what to do here. All right, read the question, Steve. Read the question. There was definitely a 40 involved, so I think what fraction of the area of n is the area of s. So you could give them a length. So you could say that what I'd really want to do is give them this length because then we could work out. A non -agon. what's the exterior angle of a non -agon? Forty. Oh, the exterior angle's four. Oh, 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 oh. This angle. This angle here is forty as well. This is forty-two. So 
So the angle at the center of one of those triangles is 40, and then the, that angle is 42, is well, 40 as well. And so what you can do is you can write you can write the lengths of the white triangles in terms of sine and cos 40. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure it's not a ninth. I'm not sure it's not a ninth. I'm, I'm going to pass and I'm going to mark it. So let's go. We're going to go back to uh, start. We're going to mark it. And I have not made a lot of errors today, so I'm so sorry for being watching this uh, after the fact. But uh, we've answered all but one question. I'm, I'm, I'm done now with, uh, with my... Uh, do I have the answers out? Yes, I've got the answers. I think they're in... Yeah, yeah, okay, right. So we're going to mark it, and then if you'd like to post your scores after you've marked it in the YouTube video comment section below, you can do that. Um, but we're going to go through. So that's the question paper. Where's the answers? Did I have the answers? Uh, okay, go to that. We don't need the questions anymore. We have the answers. So we're going to mark it. Um, all right, so question number one is C. Question number two is B. Question number three is E. Question number four is also E. Question number five is C. Question number six is B. Question number seven is C. Question number eight is B. Question number nine is also B. Question ten is D. Question eleven is also D. I need to scroll down. Question number twelve is B. Question 13 is C, question 14 is A, question 15 is B, that took far too long. Thank you very much in the chat. So question 15 is B, question 16 is D, oh, green pen. Question 17, need to scroll down again one second. Question 17 is D, did not like that. Oh, they've done a nice way, actually. They said that Amy started with 3A, and then they're all divisible by 3. And Beth started with 9B. And then things were divisible, and then they kind of worked out from there. Uh, 18 is E. 19 is B. I like that one, although I didn't like my method. 20 is also B. 21 was C. That was nice as well, that one. Question 22 is D. Question 23 is C. Question 24, I had seen this one before. And I remember liking it last time. Question 24 is D. Question 25, if you've done it, was A. So we didn't do that. What have they done? They've said in each of the triangles, you've got kind of triangles like that. They've called this length here 1, and then this length here is h, and then that is also h because it's the same, or h plus 1. one of them's, so, so this side here is h plus 1, and this side here is h, and then you've got x being the outside edge, and the inside edge is 1. So you can write it as like a 1 to x thing, so you've got basically this inside edge here is part of the... So on, uh, and then use Pythagoras to get h in terms of x, and then they've put in a 40 in. Yeah, it's a bit too complicated for me to do, to do it right now at uh, 11 p.m. at night. So anyway, that's been a senior math challenge. Oh, we need to score it, don't we? It's been a senior math challenge. I'm sorry about my errors today. Uh, can't really redo it without the errors because then I've seen all the questions. So our score, we didn't get any wrong. Uh, but the chat helped me definitely with one, and they solved one for me, I think. Um, it might have been the girls' sweets one. So I'm going to say I got 13 questions uh, right. Four points a question, don't you? No, I got 23. There we go. 23 gets me uh, 92. And then I passed on two gets me zero and I get my 25 for playing the game 
So I'm going to get 117 out of 125. That is my score for the Senior Math Challenge 2017. If you like what I do, I do these live on Twitch, so please come and cheer me on. The Twitch link's in the chat below. Uh, also, post your score in the chat. Say which question you like the best. Tell me if there was a better method you can do. And I think for quite a lot of them, I didn't do elegant methods. So, uh, Otherwise, uh, I'll be back with another stream uh, any day now. And I will be back with more videos on Twitch at a later date. Uh, please like, share, subscribe. Tell people about it. It's free for you, and it helps me out. So... I'll see you soon. Thanks very much.